Colgate is more than a toothpaste. Trust me on that one. This is Locked On Baylor. You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Locked On Baylor brought to you by Nissan. I am your host, Cam Stewart from ESPN Central Texas, and we are going to learn all about the Colgate Raiders today. I had Tommy Sladek coming on. He's been covering Colgate all year long up in the Syracuse, New York area. And then, unfortunately, some bad news for Baylor, Baylor fans as we head into the NCAA tournament tomorrow without one of the best players coming off the bench and arguably one of the best punch players in the entire country, at least out for this weekend. But first, let's talk to Tommy Sladek and let's hear all about this Colgate Raider team that takes the court against Baylor tomorrow. Here with Tommy Sladek of CNY Central, a.k.a. your Colgate Raiders expert. And Tommy, we are, we are so close to the game and Colgate comes in, basically the dynasty of central New York right now. Tell us about what this program has been building the last couple of years. Cam, thanks for having me on, dude. Uh, these guys are dogs. They are the dogs of the Patriot League, and that all started when Matt Langle came to town 13 years ago to help bring this team really just to the to the promised land and and to make them this you know Patriot League powerhouse. That's you know again, there's still a piece to go, and that is actually winning an NCAA tournament game. But when it comes to working with what you have. This guy's gotten it done, and you know we're I'm based in Syracuse, but an hour southeast, truly like a small farm town, Hamilton, New York, tiny college. Just it becomes such a big story every March, and it's it's a joy. And finally, you can like separate them from Hamilton and the NESCAC, which I think is great. And and now, unfortunately, you know Syracuse on a bit of a downspin. So is is Colgate now the team of Central New York? Definitely. Definitely. It's, and it's, people are becoming accustomed to it. Right. And it's, it's interesting watching the polls go out there for this Syracuse fan base. That's obviously huge like Baylor. Yeah. And it's interesting seeing people's response when asked, who's the team you root for now. And sometimes it's those close together teams. Like you look at North Carolina, Duke, NC state, mm -hmm. Wake Forest. It's like, I'm rooting for anyone, but these guys, but here people shift over to Colgate when the Q isn't in. I love that. I love that. And it's kind of a, a renaissance of, of Colgate athletics, so to speak. I, I talked about this off air, but but I knew them as Mike Milbury school, being a hockey fan in Boston. And I remember Peter Baum winning the Tuaraton Ward, which is like the Heisman of lacrosse. But now it's basketball, basketball, basketball. Essentially five straight Patriot League championships, five out of the last six, but the one was COVID, uh, but have not come through with that win in the tournament yet. This might be a simple answer, Tommy, but why is that? Why have they not broken through to the other side? Gosh, it's it's a it's a great question. The easiest thing I can say is they're they've just been going up against bigger, stronger, more athletic teams, and it's that yeah. edge end of the day that has just taken them down, right? And you're, when you were you're recruiting for you know a Patriot League school, you know that. You're not going to be competing in that sense. It's like, what can you get guys to come to Colgate for? Well, now it's to play for Matt Langle, to play for a program, to play for a chance. If you are a player that's getting recruited to the mid-majors, here's someone saying, you want to go dancing? You want to be a part of this? That's the draw. But everyone around this program knows that they're competitive enough to where it's coming at one point. But what's been holding them back, and that's just, it's those little moments. It's the little things like athleticism. That's not to say that they haven't been competitive. Because if you look sure. back, there's been two of those games, Tennessee 2019, and then Wisconsin 2022, if I have those right, lost by seven points in both. But Cam, when you, when you break it down and look at the ones where they went close, you know, they were up on Wisconsin, I think at halftime. And then, you know, kind of blew it in the second half, pretty similar with Tennessee, but then they, you have bad ones. Last year was the worst one yet, which is surprise. You almost think after a few years that maybe it would be a little bit more close, but Texas mm -hmm. just devoured them, devoured them. And that was because those three pointers that were their, the bread and butter, the signature in the years prior just weren't falling and that, and that crushed them. So they, they need the three point shooting 
They need a little bit of luck on their side, and they just need to finish strong because the second halves have just been been killing these guys. Yeah, and obviously another Patriot League championship, so I don't want to have this diminish the team at all, but uh, I've heard from Colgate people that this is actually not the most talented team they've had in this Matt Langle run here. Is, is that fair to say? I would say so, definitely. Just because you have these younger guys starting to take some really big roles where we got so used to it being that starting five was made up of, for the most part, of third, fourth, fifth-year guys, right? It's anyone that was getting serious minutes at that point, um, you know, was at the end of their run with the program. And it started a few years ago. You had Jordan Burns, who, you know, dropped 32 points in that Tennessee game. He stays on. He's a part of the 2021 game against Arkansas. And then Nellie Cummings was the dude in 2022. He ends up leaving and going to Pitt. Tucker Richardson, who also was draining threes. I think people were like, Tucker Richardson is this guy LeBron James against Wisconsin. They <laughs> they were raining threes. He graduates. And all of a sudden, you look at this 2024 team, and you still have guys like their big man center, Keegan Records, yeah. who he's a fifth year. He's been a part of all these seasons, but it's their player of the year, Braden Davis, or excuse me, Braden Smith that he's the one making the most noise and he's a sophomore. And so that's what's really interesting about it. You also have Jaden Cox coming in. He's starting as a freshman. So you're you're right. The the talent is not as high as in recent years, but they also have their own style that makes me think maybe this is the twist that they need, you know? And, and Matt Langle, that's the guy. He's the architect oh, behind no. all of this. He he's turned this around. He's recruiting nationally. Braden Smith from Seattle. Uh, PJ Carlissimo's son is on the team. He's actually got a guy from Canada. So international recruiting, and he has built up this program. Tell me all I need to know about Matt Langle. What's the style? What's the energy? Oh man, where do we start with this guy? Well, for one, he's a he's a South Jersey dude, so he ends up playing at Penn. So. He's Man's a guy after a, your own heart, by the way. You're you're a Philly area guy. He is. He yeah. is. So we 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 have that root. We have that connection. You know, I went to Temple, where you know brainiacs like me go, and then you have Penn. You know, yeah. low, lower on the scale. Where the, the guys I, who can't get into Temple go. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's a safety school, <laughs> but any, yeah, he uh, so he goes to Penn, plays there as a part of an NCAA tournament team under Fran Dunphy. He ended up coaching under Fran Dunphy at Temple and then comes up and gets his opportunity at Colgate. And this is the type of dude where you watch his teams, and this is year in and year out, Cam. They are so disciplined. They they are – and they're so comfortable. They just seem so cozy and at peace with their role on the floor at all times. And it's a reason why that they've not only just become a Patriot League power, but because they the, – the games that they're able to keep close is – they don't look afraid. And if you go and you get these two teams on the court for the first time, you might look at Colgate and be like, this isn't exactly your D1 powerhouse looking guys. A lot of the times they're they're undersized or they just don't have that look to them, but they play with so much confidence. And that's what Matt Langle instills with them. And he's very serious about how they take it. And whether it's the zone or man to man, they very much have a system to both. And you can easily see that they're very much prepared and looking to see what defense is going, you know, going up against them. And this week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. So yeah, each week we're picking one team that stands out, a team that has pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys just take it to the next level. And I'm looking at the Nissan Armada. And all I can think about are the Auburn Tigers to me, okay? Because Auburn has come out and they have shown with Tennessee falling out early in the SEC tournament that they are the dominant team in the Southeast. We saw them all the way back in November. They have the pieces. I'm thinking of guys like Janai Broom. I'm thinking of that backcourt. They have got the pieces to make a really deep run. So it's no wonder why they are one of the most feared teams going into this tournament. I have them going very far. You can take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find Find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. And today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. You can say goodbye 
to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney, okay? So whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, be conservative, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your $5, first $5 bet wins. So that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win the whole darn thing. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on all the college hoops until they're cutting down the nets in Phoenix. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. In today's day and age of college sports, college basketball specifically, we are seeing it this week. Teams are turning down the NIT because they're worried about losing their players or bringing players in. And these these lower leagues, these mid-major conferences just get absolutely raided. No pun intended. Right. And yet here's Colgate, who is bringing these guys back every year and winning the conference championships, going to the big dance, like you said earlier. How impressive is that, that Langle is able to keep these guys on board year after year after year? It's huge. I mean, it's it's something that's impressed me so much year after year. And the biggest one was Keegan Records actually went into the – he went into the transfer portal this offseason. He ends up returning, and a part of that is just that fight to get one more. It's yeah. what – a big player of theirs, Tucker Richardson's, what brought him back for a fifth year that he had thanks to COVID that extra year with the pandemic. And it's these guys wanting to finish unfinished business, and that's winning an NCAA tournament game. And if you ask them, it's it's winning the whole dang thing yeah. because that's where that confidence comes from. They truly believe that they can do it. But it's getting that win. And, you know, I think for some people or teams that play in a mid-major, like the Patriot League, your your goal is to get to the dance. But it's it's a yearly thing for them. Now it's about actually going in and making some noise. And I think that's what's keeping these guys around is they want to be the first team to be a part of that. Because it just hasn't happened under – Langle, it's never happened for the school. Right, right. And, and you talked about the defense and how disciplined they are. Is that how they're attacking you? Is this is this the UVA of the Patriot League, or can they? They are number one in yeah. the scoring in, in, in yeah. the in scoring in the conference as well. So how does Colgate beat you? Well, they're they're going to go slower. They they definitely right. will. But at the same time, you watch Braden Smith, and he's their point guard, player of the year, and. What ends up coming into play is he was a quarterback, star quarterback, I might add. That makes his, so much sense. In his Seattle high school days. Because you watch him, bro, for five minutes, and you realize that he's a conductor. He's got his orchestra of players out there, and it truly looks like he's running a football offense sometimes when they're pushing down the court. And that's what's honestly a little bit different about them. And, yes, they're not as talented as recent years, but what makes them different? I mean, granted, they're still top 50 in three-point shooting right now. But there's been years past where they're first, second, third. How are they still winning games? And they attack the basket with so much more aggression than I've seen in recent years where they very much, it was live or die by the three. If they could shoot it over 45, 50%, they'd have a chance to get a win in March Madness. If it's going anything below that and they're, they're done. In Texas, they shot three for 15. It was a mess. But they have that aggression getting to the lane. And then defensively, I mean, granted this, you know, this is their conference. They're really good at defending the three ball. Teams yeah. were number one in the up. conference, by the way. Number one in the conference, like twenty six percent. Even the, even when they were losing, teams were sh shooting below thirty percent. So that's what they have going for them. Whether they can keep that up against Baylor, that's my biggest question. That's my biggest question. But in terms of an advantage, if they can keep that going, you know, that's that'll go in their way. Yeah, and I do want to talk about Braden Smith a little bit because this kid is unreal. You mentioned him. He's, he's one of the sophomores. He's not right. this fifth-year senior who's been here forever. He's still developing, and he reminds me a lot of Baylor's point guard, Ray J. Dennis, in that they both can score a lot inside the three-point arc. Um, they, they, they finish amongst the trees, and like you mentioned, that's slow developing. I mean, they can lull you to sleep and then kill you. With, mm -hmm. with an alley oop or a left handed finish or all of that. So I see a lot of the similarities there. And, but one thing that I see from Braden Smith that I don't see from pretty much any point guard in the country, he's six feet tall. He is second on the team in rebounding. And in the three games of the Patriot League tournament, he averaged nine rebounds a game. He was 27 rebounds as opposed to 15 assists. How does that happen? 
I don't know if it's if this is a Dennis Rodman situation where he just studies <laughs> the way the ball bounces off the rim, but a part of me thinks it has to because he's so good at where it looks like, oh, he's just in the right place at the right time. But I think he's thinking that whole thing through. You know what I mean? I, I really do think he's someone that is a student of the game. And that's pretty common with Matt Langles guys. These are smart kids. You know, if they're if they're not going to play pro basketball, they're going to go be doing some pretty big stuff in Boston, New York, whatever it is. It's a it's a it's a very prominent school. And he just gives me someone that has a a high basketball IQ, knows where to be, knows that the big guys down low, Keegan, you know, Jeff Wilbur, where they're going to be, and he knows his spot. Um, do I think that can continue against bigger teams? No. And it's it's probably not a good sign if he's the one that needs to be in charge of getting the ball. They need to make sure that their bigs are the ones that are getting those numbers. But as long as they're winning games and he's putting up those rebounding numbers, who cares? But I can just tell you right now, it's just I don't foresee that happening against the Bears. Yeah, and and I will put this out for you and any Colgate fans listening. You might have dodged a bullet in that Baylor has a top five in the nation point guard coming in next year because I, this gives me such shades of, in 2016, they lost to Yale in the first round. This guy, Makai Mason, went off against Baylor. And then yeah. two years later, he was playing for Baylor. So uh, three years later, I guess. And so I, I, I'm i hoping for you guys to say that's not going to happen. I think both of us right. will, will be okay there. Uh, so you mentioned uh, maybe some help that they need down low. They've, they've got some bruisers down there for Colgate, but are they a Great team... Place. Are they a team that can play inside out? You mentioned it's not the three-point shooting that it used to be, but are they still capable of that? Can they still beat you that way? Very much so. And that just right. be, that just comes from experience because the two guys I'm talking about are, are Keegan Records, who's 6'10". He's the fifth year. And then you have Jeff Woodward, who's 6'11", Audubon PA guy. Um, and, and Baylor fans, you will recognize Jeff the second he hits the court. Because he has the yeah, mountain man grizzly beard, and he's one of the more eccentric personalities you'll see on a basketball court. Like he just he he can't help but let his personality show, whether that's screaming, yelling, doing a little bit of a dance. He just he has that type of personality. But at the same time, he also is able to channel that into some serious big man energy, and he's very good at getting to the rim and getting fouled. Now the two of them. I think very much can make noise together. Keegan Records isn't the type of dude that's going to be coming up and posterizing someone, right? Mm -hmm. He's 6'10", but most of the time he's not going to dunk. He's just going to lay it in. Doesn't exactly have the 45-inch. It doesn't have the 45-inch vertical, um, but they're just they're skilled, they're disciplined, and they have experience, and they know exactly where to be. So I could see that being a, a little bit of a battle down there in the beginning of the game. And, and pronounce your center's name for me, because I've heard it go two different ways. That would be Eve Misi. Okay? okay, that's that that's means- the prevailing descri- or, uh, pronunciation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's roll with that. But he's he's interesting, and I really am fascinated to see how those two match up, right? Because I think the two of them can take him on together. And also, okay. you know, you have a freshman, you have a more disciplined player, but his athleticism – that's the thing that worries me because I think he could, in theory, run circles around him, lob passes, alley oops. I think he could really make a difference. Yeah, and if Bay, uh, I'll just say this: if Baylor gets a sniff at that that alley oop, they're they're going to do it, that pick and roll alley oop. They're pretty They'll relentless all day. with that. I've yeah. noticed. Yeah, there was the point, yeah. like in the beginning of the conference schedule, where we were screaming at the TV of like, okay. This doesn't work every other time down the court anymore. There's other ways to score. So, yeah, definitely a lot of athleticism from the center position. It's not they, – they they make up for it with their athleticism, kind of the lack of physicality, and they've gotten better as the season goes on. So uh, that will be an interesting matchup. But, boy, Tommy, you got me a little worried because this sounds like a team that's ready to win a tournament game. And I don't, They're fiending, I don't want man. That. They're fiending. And, and it's one of those where every year I'm like, this could be it. Like, I truly have that feeling. You know, last year was maybe the only one where I just – I hated the way they matched up with Texas. I was just like, this is going to be a disaster. And the only thing that would have kept them in a game is that they got the three-point shooting. And like I mentioned, three-point shooting isn't up to par with previous years, but I do still think that's even – that's needed to even put up with Baylor. But, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely curious about the Jalen Bridges of the team, right, If and, and – 
because I think guard wise the size is there. You know, I think I think Woodward and and records can handle things down low. It's to me, it's always that six seven to six nine power yeah. forward that could just do them in. Gotcha. Gotcha. I got two quick fire questions for you, Tommy, before we let you go. First, I need your prediction on the game. Mm-hmm. And second, I need what brand of toothpaste you use. Okay, here we go. Let's go number two. Um, you guys heard of Crest? It's oh, a big no one way. begins with a C. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. Funny. Talk about a homer, man. Every March, every March, we do one of these shows. And the Colgate question oh, and the toothpaste question always gets asked. But I can't – you know, as someone that didn't grow up around here, that's the way I thought of it. Yeah. Someone yeah. said Colgate. I didn't think Matt Langle, Jeff Woodward, Keegan Records. I Mike thought – I thought Mike Milberg. I thought about the, the stuff going on my toothbrush. But prediction-wise, this is tough. And normally I, re- I really do like siding with Colgate and giving them their chance. Do I think it's happening this year? I I don't like the matchup enough, but I do like the idea of this staying close. I like the idea of it being five points or so at halftime, which very much like I mentioned, first half is there. That's where they've been eating up in March Madness. It's the second half where they start to lose some steam. So I'm thinking let's let's keep the seven point trend going. I think they cover, but I think they lose, and I'm gonna go with 72 to 65. All right. That's that's being a true friend of the show right there. Yeah. Uh, Tommy, before we let you go, we know you've got coverage going out all week for this. So how can people find you? How can our Baylor people find you and, and learn some more about Colgate? Baylor gang, you got my ex, my Twitter right there at Tommy Sladak. We're on CNY Central, so we're kind of a triple affiliate. But um, yeah, give me a follow on there and I'll be taking care of you when it comes to Colgate stuff this week. Sounds good, Tommy. Thanks so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Enjoy the game and enjoy Memphis. You got, you're got, you going, right? Yes, I'm going to be there walking in Memphis. Yep. Let's go, dude. Head, head up Beale Street, eat barbecue until you can't move, and then they'll just roll you out of there. It's good. That's the plan. I don't like walking anyway, so good, perfect. Thanks, Tommy. Appreciate it again. Gotcha, man. All right, the tournament has officially started, but the real stuff kicks off today. I'm talking round to 64, and there's no better way to keep up with all the madness than Amazon Fire TV. It is your destination for sports. From all those live games today, tomorrow, and the next day, to the highlights, to the in-depth analysis, or just keeping up who is won and lost on your bracket, Fire TV offers those amazing viewing experiences with their smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick, which I am bringing to Memphis with me this weekend so I can plug it into an existing TV and provide access to those millions of movies, TV episodes, free and live TV as well. They even recently created TV channels on Fire TV to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of those big pro leagues and college conferences. It is the best way to keep up to date on all that's going on. You know, NBA, NHL, baseball is coming up, and of course, everything going on on March Madness. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. So if you haven't checked out those Fire TV channels, you need to do that. You got to trust me again on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. And as the Bears go to take the court tomorrow, they will do so with one of their most dangerous weapons on the bench in sweats once again. Scott Drew announced yesterday before the team left for Memphis that Langston Love will not be a part of the action this weekend and may, might not be for the whole tournament If we're at this point in the season. Uh, he did just rule him out for this weekend. Uh, and that, that is a big blow to Baylor. I think a lot of us We're sitting here thinking, okay, you know, we would have liked him to play in the Big 12 tournament, but don't mind getting the rest. We need him. We need him next week, which next week is here, and Baylor's going to have to go without again. Um, It's really unfortunate for the team and and for the player. You remember he played just about five minutes against Santa Barbara last year and had the injury as well. Uh, And so this is year three that he's been on campus. The poor guy just hasn't really been able to play a tournament game yet. And 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 it's obviously a big blow to the team. Uh, you know, this is a guy we're talking about. Can't can't undersell this enough. Or yeah, <laughs> can't undersell it. In that he was going to be the sixth man of the year in the Big Twelve. Like we're not just talking oh a good bench piece. We're talking about one of the best bench pieces in the country. 
in Langston Love, a guy who would start for most teams in the nation and absolutely has the talent to start for Baylor, but has excelled in that role as your scorer off the bench, which every national championship team needs. Pretty much every Final Four team needs it too. You know, I, I don't think Final Four teams need to necessarily go 10 deep, but but you need to have punch off the bench. You know, I, I think back to 2021, and I think it was the Wisconsin game, Matthew Meyer gives you 20 points off the bench. Like, that's a huge lift. He made some big plays in that Villanova game. That's a, that's a big, big lift for a team that had a great starting five. You still needed someone like Matthew Byer to come off the bench and provide that punch. I'm, I'm thinking back to Duke in 2015. Grayson Allen has the great championship game where he, you know, scores eight or ten points, but gets them back in that game with energy and production off the bench. And right now, that, that's a tough ask for the rest of this bench. I'm looking at Caleb Lohner as a guy who, you know, had a had another coming out party in the in the Big 12 tournament this year, had his best minutes of the season in the last couple of weeks of the season last year. So this this I'm hoping he is a PT peer and and he's gonna step up big for this team. But to not have such a talented shooter as well as penetrator coming off the bench in Langston Love, that's big. That's big because that's a lot to ask for someone like Miro Little, who, again, I, I think has done his job well and admirably. But it's just tough for a freshman coming in here to just be like, hey, can you give me eight or ten off the bench in the in the NCAA tournament? That's 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 not an easy thing to do. And it can make or break runs in this tournament to have someone off the bench who can do that, especially if you have a game like you had against Iowa State where you know, Jacoby, Jalen Bridges, Jaden Nunn, and then in the first half, Ray J. Dennis, they can't shoot the ball. Now, I'm, I'm hoping that doesn't, that's not happening again. I doubt it will happen again that all three or all four of them are off the mark. But when, when you're missing shots early, it can damage a, a confidence to a team like Baylor. And to not have that guy you can bring off the bench that says, hey, get our, get our head right. Give us, put the ball in the basket a few times and get our offense back to where it needs to be. Mm. That is a huge miss, a huge miss. And obviously, you know, can't blame the player, can't blame the coach, but it, it is weird that now two of the last three seasons, we've seen a day-to-day, day-to-day injuries. You know, I'm thinking of LJ Cryer in 2022 and Langston Love this year. Day-to-day injuries that we heard for months turn into, well, now they're not playing in the biggest games of the year because that's concerning. And I hope I'm wrong about this, but... Once you rule a guy out of the first weekend of the tournament, if you even make it to the second weekend, that's that's tough to just bring him back, which is odd because he played over 20 minutes against Tech two weeks ago, and that's why we were all kind of scratching our heads as to why he wasn't available in the Big 12 tournament. You're thinking, okay, you get the rest, and now here we go. He's, he's out this weekend too. And one thing you also got to keep, keep in mind here is what Bill Self said about Kevin McCullough said, yeah, he came back and played some games, but he hadn't practiced in six weeks. I wouldn't be surprised if Langston Love hasn't practiced since that first Tech game, where or that, sec, or that second BYU game, I guess, when he re-aggravated that injury. That's what, that's what happens with these guys. You know, you stay on the bike, you stay in shape, but they're not, they're not out there practicing. They're, they're just keeping their body rested for the game. And so all that to say, if he's out this week and Baylor makes it to next weekend, I, I'm not betting my money that Langston Love's available to play because, I mean, Scott Drew's a Hall of Fame coach. He knows this. These games matter just as much. There is no next weekend if if not this weekend. So a, a crushing blow for Baylor, honestly, um, which a, te- a team that has become a hot pick uh, around the country uh, amongst people playing the brackets to, to go deep in this tournament. I have them going deep in this tournament. I truly believe they can they can still make a nice run. But I think this lowers your ceiling a little bit. I really do. Let me know what you think about that Langston Love injury um, and, and what that's going to do to to Baylor's chances going forward here in the NCAA tournament. And let me know what you think about uh, this Colgate team. Very happy to have Tommy Sladek on there. Uh, he obviously knows his stuff. He's done his Baylor research as well. Um, so thanks big time to Tommy on that one. And he, I don't know, man, he, he tripped me up a little bit. I'm thinking, boy, this team might be ready to win a tournament game. But he did mention this isn't the most talented team 
that they've ever had there, nor the most senior laden team, although a lot more veteran led than than Baylor is. But I think Baylor's got the talent and they're battle tested. So I'm picking them in this game. But we'll talk more about that game tomorrow. Uh, as as you will, we will be your pregame listen, uh, and we'll kind of go a little bit more in depth on the numbers on what to look out for at that game at eleven thirty a.m. tomorrow. Let me know what you think about the Colgate Raiders, about Langston Love. Drop that down in the comments below. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. Be sure to like and subscribe. Tell a friend. We'll be back with you tomorrow on game day from Memphis, Tennessee. That's where I'll be dropping it from on your favorite show, Locked On Baylor.